Hello, everyone. I'm Steph. And I have loved putting Linux together, integrating it. I've contributed to over 100 different projects uh, in, the, in the open source ecosystem. And that's, in many ways, why I was one of the folks who built Cockpit. Cockpit brings together a whole bunch of stuff and has done awesome things. But it talks to about, a, again, about 90 to 100 different parts of Linux um, in order to do its job. When we were doing that, uh, we had to integrate it, we had to test it, we had to make sure it worked together, and so I got dragged into the strange world of continuous integration and testing. We're trying to make the operating system more integrated and work better together. So I'm a CI freak, and um, I often get teased about this. I work for Red Hat. Hey, I'm Tomáš, and I like containers. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. That's it. <laughs> so, a self-maintaining package. Wouldn't we like that? Um, what we really want is for the package to do its dirty work itself, to automatically have that taken care of for you. And you have, instead of having something that you have to take care of bit by bit by bit, you basically have to train and take care of it in a much higher level way. But why would you want such a thing? Why are we looking at such a thing? Why is it an interesting problem for us to solve? Well, it's much more fundamental than that. We bring together tons of packages into a Linux distro, Fedora. There's, there's uh, what is it, five digits worth of packages, somewhere between 15 and 20,000. And we integrate them. And yet, each of those packages upstream, most of them, do not have any immediate feedback on how they affect the rest of the distribution, the other 15,000 packages. We all contribute back to upstream individually, and this is awesome. You can read it right in the, in the, the basic description of how to be a package maintainer. Send your work upstream. But as a distribution, we do that very, very poorly. The distribution itself, represented in the upstream project, it's not really on their radar. They know it exists, but it's not in the workflow of those projects. Some upstream projects bring it into their workflow. I know that uh, System D does this, Cockpit does this. There's a bunch of them that does, do this, where a certain pull request, a change is proposed to the project, and immediately testing is, they, they figured out how to do this. It take, takes forever. It took them six months to a year to implement something like this. Figure out how it works on the distribution. Dora, Debian, RHEL, whatever, and bring that feedback immediately to say, hey, you broke shit. Um, but it's tough for this to happen for each of those projects. And it's difficult to make this work. So let's be clear. We probably have a lot of people here who are excited by the act of packaging. And that's nice. But keep in mind, it's not exciting for most upstream projects. It's like the nasty stuff that they have to do. It's the cleaning up the mess of the baby. The baby is nice, but they don't want to keep, you know, taking care of that part. That part's not the highlight. So um, having the latest bits integrated with the rest and usable, that's exciting. But the mechanism to do it is not. So oh, we already talked about the example of System D, but keep in mind, System D is awesome as it is is completely inert by itself. It needs the rest, a whole bunch of other things, to run. It needs to be integrated with those things. And most importantly, when it breaks shit, it needs to know right away. Or the people working on it need to know right away. So what if you could immediately know if your upstream change works in Fedora? What if your new upstream release automatically landed in Rawhide? What if we had something like this, just a mock-up? And here, pull request happens, proposed change, and a Fedora packaging service comes along, similar to Travis, similar to, uh, to you know, Circle CI, Semaphore, and so on, and says, we packaged this, and here, you can try it out. But it doesn't work. Um, or we package this, and it will land in Rawhide when this pull request is merged. What if we could do that? What would we need to make this happen? Tomas, what do we need to make this happen? 
Okay, let's go through the list. Uh, so first of all, it's not an easy task, right? As you, as you can imagine. Uh, so first of all, we need to package the upstream software, right? So in Fedora, for example, we need spec files. Uh, then we need tests, like, okay, we packaged it, now we need to verify that the software works, so we need tests. Uh, okay, what's next? Uh, we have these two, it's, it's pretty nice, but if we don't use this, if we don't use the spec file, we don't run the tests, and we just, like, blindly put it into the distribution, we have no idea whether it works. So we need, we need to build a gate. We need to make sure that if the tests are failing, we don't put that content into our distribution and we keep going on until all, all is green. Uh, and finally, it would be very nice if all of this was done automatically. So I, I, for example, as a package maintainer, wouldn't need to go and fetch those tarballs and edit these lines in spec files and then type build and wait like 30 minutes and then it failed and now I need to do it again. I would love to have packaging service which would do all of this for me and all I would really need to do was just, yeah, I, I approve this change, do it. Uh, let's talk about all these points uh, a little bit more. So spec files. Uh, wouldn't it be nice if we had spec files upstream? Yeah, I, c I can see that this is like a very controversial thing because some of the upstream projects don't even care about spec files. They don't understand them. They, or maybe they understand them or maybe they think they understand them. And then you try to consume them downstream and realize that uh, they are trying to support like five different distribution and the spec file is horrible and unusable. Uh, so maybe spec files upstream is not the best solution, but some somewhere it can work, somewhere it doesn't. So there's also another way how to solve this. So in Fedora specifically, we have a bunch of tools, uh, like, I don't know how, how they are called, but I call them spec generators. So in an input, you, you gave the name of the upstream project, as an output, you get the spec file. So we, we could use such mechanism that, for example, there is a new package on PyPI, and I use the pip tool. RPM tool and I would get a spec file and I can use it right away and build a package in Fedora. Obviously the, like the problem is changelog because you need to populate it and if the changelog doesn't make sense, if it's like 1,000 lines of commit messages, that, that's not useful, right? So we need to like figure it out how to do it. The other thing is release number in like name version release. Uh, the release number is specific to build system and like build system cares about it. So why should we as package maintainers should like treat release numbers like it should be automatically populated by the build system. Uh, okay, tests. So upstream projects te have tests, right? Uh, so we can easily run them and see if the software works in our environment. Uh, then we need to have distribution tests or we already have them as Adam Williamson spoke in, in his talk. Uh, so we just run all these tests, and when they pass, we are pretty sure that the software works in Fedora Rawhide or in the distribution of our choice. Uh, but the thing is that we need to use those which are coming with the change. So if there is a new upstream release, we should use those tests which are coming from that release. Uh, and finally, every project runs or invokes their tests on their own, so we need an like a standard way to invoke it. So for example, we would have a definition that you have to do make test and like everything will run. Like that would be the like API. So we need such standard way. So let's look at the diagram how this, like how this would work. So the whole nice green box is our upstream project. We have a bunch of different branches for our for releases of our software and you would have automation to bring it automatically to uh, Fedora disk git or uh, to like different Fedora releases. Uh, so in this case, the upstream project is all cool. And put the spec file in the test wrapper, the standard way to invoke the tests in their branches in part of their development. Many projects do this. We know of many that we maintain that do this. Um, this is, not, this is not fictional, but and you can see certain branches on the Fedora side tracking that automatically without any intermediate party. Um, there's, there's, the automation would need to take into account who made the change, whether they did a GPG signature on a certain tag or whether a certain uh, identity pushed into the Git forge, um, and then it could land in Fedora in, a different, in these branches. Okay, thank you. Uh, 
What if the upstream project doesn't care about spec files and doesn't want to have spec files in their repository? Uh, then we can create a new Git branch like in GitHub or GitLab or Pegger or somewhere else and get all the upstream, uh, get all the upstream code, uh, stuff all our downstream changes, which is spec file, tests, test wrappers, uh, and even additional commits, which are fixes from the master branch. And you would have such branch and use this branch uh, to track like the upstream release and use it in downstream. And it would be just like a like simple, simple repo or, or a single uh, branch, and we could use it to, for, to populate multiple branches. So the benefit is like, for example, there is a new upstream release and you need to populate three different branches in Fedora. Like in this way, you would only set it in one and you would benefit in all three. Right, and this really is using Git in the way that God intended, well, Linus intended, right? so the same thing. You have a branch, you have another branch, you have some different stuff on this branch, you may push this to a different repo, depending on what upstream says, and essentially using the tools, including um, GitLab, GitHub, the standard workflows that people are used to using in the way that they were designed. Okay, so the another thing we need to make all of this happen is gating of Rawhide. So r right now, Rawhide is not gated. So whenever there's a new upstream release, it lands in Rawhide and that's it. It's very, like, very easy to break Rawhide if your upstream release like, changes something. So we need to build that gate and use it. Uh, so together we are trying, uh, like we will do it with Fedora engineering. So we already started the discussions and hopefully it will be done sooner or later. Uh, and with the gating, we have increased stability because only the proven tested content will land in raw height. Uh, like at start, we can't like enable, like enable it on all. Uh, we'll probably start with some core packages, with some important packages, and then we start on board more and more. Uh, and important thing is that if you are owner of a package and for example, some other package breaks your package, like your dependency, you can contribute tests to that package and say, okay, so please include also my test suite when you are updating your package, and whenever my test suite breaks, uh, it means that you probably introduced a breaking change or there's some issue, and we can work on it together. But I don't want to uh, find out it after like it's already landed raw height and it's already broken, and there are bug reports coming, and there's fire on the roof and I need to like do it very quickly. Let's do it while we are still working on the code. So, and finally, we want the automated packaging service. So we, we call it Packet, like that's the name of the project, of the team. Uh, and so set, like it will be a set of tools, we are just starting. It will be a set of tools, you can easily run it on your laptop and do all the automation, or we will provide it as a service, so it, we will run it for you, and you can just enable it for your projects uh, and use it, and all your packages will be updated. So the hardest thing about the project was the name. We were trying to figure it out for like three months. <laughs> but finally it's it. Uh, so one of the things we would love to explore is opening full requests for new upstream releases. So when there is a new upstream release, the tool or the service would create a pull request with all the changes, and you as a maintainer would just review the changes and say, yeah, okay, it looks good, all the tests are passing, let's just ship it. Or no, it's broken, I need to fix it, and you would just fix it. Uh, at the same time, uh, Fedora Engineering, in one of their services, is trying to do the same thing. So in the end, it doesn't, like, it's an implementation detail who actually implements it, uh, whether it's us or Fedora Engineering, but we just need the feature. Uh, we also want to bring the feedback from uh, downstream back to upstream, so whenever there is a new up upstream release and it breaks Fedora, we can easily create issue on their tracker or send them an email and say, your newest upstream release does, doesn't work. Maybe it concerns you. Maybe it doesn't and we won't do it ever again. And Maybe. it didn't land. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Right. It, it, did, it didn't land. It didn't land in Rawhide. Just tell them, here are the logs, try, please try to figure it out, and maybe in the next release it will work. Okay, so what are the benefits? When you, when you are using this workflow, when you are using GitHub to develop your packages, uh, you can use the tools you know. For example, right now, it's very hard to contribute to Fedora. You need to 
become the member, you need to use the tooling, and if you are using GitHub for that, when you just clone the repo, make the changes, push and create upstream pull requests, that's very easy. So you can use the tools, we can use the tools we know and keep using them. Uh, everyone can contribute, we can benefit from the modern techniques like linters or CI uh, or I don't know what else. And finally, I, uh, I can even go and fork some package like systemd or kernel, make some changes uh, and then push them and see if it works in Fedora or maybe even RHEL. Uh, so we are also planning when someone does, does, does such fork uh, and like changes something, we are planning to create a repository with the updated packages and you can install it on your laptop and use it right away and with, with the changes you just made. So, so the title of the talk is auto-maintain, and that might be, actually, it's actually even confusing still for me, like what does it mean to auto-maintain? The thing is that you as a package maintainer or an upstream developer, you are still responsible for the content, and it's still your baby, we don't want to mess with your baby, we just want to keep uh, the disk git up to date. So whenever you do some changes upstream or in the source git repository, we just take the changes and move them downstream and tell you re the results, how it goes. Uh, so we never land anything broken. You are still doing all the decisions. It's still up to you. Uh, we, we are just doing the hard work. We are just changing diapers. Yeah, it's your baby. We just want to change the diapers for you. <laughs> <laughs> we need t-shirts. <coughs> <laughs> Boo. <laughs> so, as I said, this is not an easy task, this is not an easy change, there are still many things we need to address. So, for example, distro wide changes in Fedora when we need to change 3000 spec files. So, could this, be, this system be used for such a thing? We don't know, maybe yes, maybe no. Uh, as Steph said, like, for some people, packaging is not exciting, but for some people it is. Uh, what do we do with such thing? We don't want to take packaging away from people who love it. Uh, so maybe they don't want to use such system. Uh, and finally, uh, this also means that we will like close the gap between upstream and downstream. And again, like this might be disturbing for some upstream communities. So we, we need to work and figure out how to do this. Uh, so we are almost running out of time. Yeah, so let's wrap up then. So do we want to go to Q&A? Well, let's just say, I think here's what we want to, where we want to get to. Fedora should be the de facto place to land upstream work. It should just happen as a side effect of doing the work. If you have set, if you have set things up, if you are the right person whose who's, who's identity is, is Fedora has signed off on, it should just land. And it should be packaged as a part of complete Linux. We should provide the feedback that's necessary to upstream and the automation that's necessary to accomplish this. So yes, let's go to questions. Okay, so how can you help? Give us feedback, please give us use cases or become an early adapter or give us questions right now. Yes, please. So I have two questions. One, does any, like, what if any of this exists today versus this is pie in the sky? So the question is, which parts of this exist today, if any, and whether it's pie in the sky? I would say that 90% of the ingredients exist. Rawhide gating is one of the key things that doesn't exist yet, and we're basically tying them together. Um, Adam wants to answer this? Question. Another question. Okay, so we're not, we're not saying invent all the tools, tying them together in a workflow that has this effect on upstream. So, that's, that's the job of the team, to work together with the people who own these tools, to bring them together and, uh, and do that. So, yes and no. Dominic has a... <laughs> I just want to point out, it's not completely pie in the sky because we have, we have packages that do that. So, it's not completely dreamt up. Yeah, by the way, like a bunch of the examples I had, like Cockpit lands automated releases from upstream into Fedora, uh, and of course into Debian as well. But all of these places automatically every two weeks without, without touching the Fedora tooling, just signing a tag in, uh, in Git. Well, that was my second question. Was, do you plan on making it generic enough that just to work for Debian? Obviously, 
if, if, we want, if people come and want to join in on the effort, work together on it, that's great. Um, so it's obviously a harder problem than the ones where than the ones where it's trivial to run in any environment. But I know that uh, Debian has solutions for this with auto package tests. They do. They extract the sources. Sometimes even build it and then run the test inside of their environment. Or th there's many solutions to this that we can try. In general, though, if we if we cover the ones that are easy in Fedora, the thousands of packages that do work, and leave those exceptions to then do the hard work of getting them onboarded later, we'll prove the idea before we then try and solve every really tough problem. Any other question? How, do, how much time do we have? One more? Yeah, Three minutes. We've got time. Dennis. Uh, that's, that's definitely a good discussion point. Um, so the question is, uh, can, we, can we make some of this work for new packages, make the new package workflow easier? Um, and uh, that has been brought up, and I think it's plausible. Um, and I think, I think it's worth discussing. Um, I, I, don't, I, don't have, we, I don't think we have an answer there, but we definitely, in the last couple of days, discussed this. I think we haven't touched on it much, so we can definitely put it on the roadmap and yeah. Start thinking about it, how to do it. Yeah. So, in the long run, how do you envision this working? Like, will the upstream maintainers taking care of the Fedora packaging, or Fedora maintainers contributing to packaging and the right upstream? That's a good question. So, how do we envision it working with uh, upstream maintainers taking care of more Fedora packaging, or Fedora maintainers contributing packaging work upstream? Also other, right. So how do we, in general, I think all two or all three, really. First one is, in many cases, if, uh, if, if you can contribute upstream and they're open to the idea of having a spec file there and an invocation for the tests and so on in a way that works, then yes, it's always good to, to contribute to the community directly. And especially for Rawhide, we want that, that to be tight. But if it doesn't work, then we have the option of branching upstream um, the way, with, with Git and doing the work there. And again, focusing the, the human tasks, the creative tasks of packaging, the crafting of the spec file, just so and all of that from the packager, and letting the mundane tasks be done automatically. That happens, and land in Rawhide. In addition, after a branch happens in Rawhide, from Rawhide to a release branch of Fedora, there's a lot of good packaging work that needs to be done there. And I, I, although perhaps with the same tooling, like you can run these on your laptop and so, um, are, are interesting to use there, um, it's not really the focus of this effort. Um, and so there's tons of packaging work to be done there to make sure that security fixes are applied appropriately, the right decisions are made as far as rebases, backports, and so on. And um, there's, there's tons of activity for a distribution to do there. In fact, it's the main interesting part, I would say, of the distribution, both the, the work for crafting, how, how the distribution comes together, and we try to hope that happens in source kit, and then making sure that's well maintained and works, continues to work well after branching. We're out of time. Thank you for coming. Thank you for